Assalamu alaikum and a very good day to everyone. Today I would like to present my article titled Productive Aging and Gender Differences on Time Use Pattern Among Retirees. My name is Azira Adlin Binti Adnan. The presentation outline including introduction, problem statement, research framework, methodology, findings, discussions, conclusions, and last part is recommendations. Firstly, I would like to talk about the introduction. As we can see from the picture, the life expectancy for elderly female is around 77 years old and for elderly male is 72 years old. Malaysia will become an aged nation by 2040 when elderly population age 60 years and above. By 2040, elderly population was projected to rise from 3.3 million, which is now in 2020, to over 6 million. Productive aging is an approach that emphasizes the positive aspect of growing older and how individuals can make important contribution to their own life, their communities and organization and a society as a whole. It can be said that time use survey is the only technique available at present that provides a comprehensive information on the older person about how they spend their days 24 hours a day on different economic and non-economic activities. Next is the problem statement. Often, studies focuses on the negative aspect of aging, but they keep forgetting that we have the opportunity that aging population can optimally utilize older person as resources. This study attempted to shed light on the concept of productive aging, a concept that consists of paid work and non-paid work which symbolize one productivity in both labor force and productive activities that actually unaccounted for in the national accounting, which is household management activities and caregiving activities. This is also important to assess the gender differences since those productive activities that I said before not accounted in the national accounting are mostly performed by women. There is also prominent stereotype or misconception about older women, which is women were more engaged in work associated with women's work, such as preparation of food, caring for children, and dealing with clothing materials. They also stated that women still devote much of their time to housework in comparison to men. There is a study about this. Alright, next is research framework. The research question, is there any gender difference in time use pattern on activities categorized as productive? And the specific objective is to measure difference in time use pattern for these productive activities in an attempt to reveal gender role stereotyping of women even in old age. For the framework, the independent variable is the social demographic variable, which is the gender. And the dependent variable is the time use pattern, which includes the productive activities, that is, labor force activities, household management activities, care or support activities, and self-management activities. Next, I will talk about the methodology of this study. The research design is a quantitative approach used towards a secondary data. The data was developed and collected by Associate Professor Dr. Sharifa Aziza Harun. The title of the data, Comparative Data Collection Methods for Time Use Study Among Older Persons. This data used time use survey that adopted from the United Nations Guidebook in 2005. The population is only 211 older persons among UPM's retirees are selected respondents based on the location. The samples are collected in Clan Valley housing area. The sampling used is purposive sampling technique 
and the sample is chosen by those who agreed to participate only. The research instrumentation used is the time use section consists of three parts, which is one for the weekend and two for the weekdays. The findings are shown in the table below. As we can see, there is four variable group that will be tested using independent sample t-test to see the hypothesis. For the labor force activities and self-management activities, the result of p-value is more than 0.05, which is not significant. That means there is no significant difference in time use pattern between men and women. Whereas for the household management activities and care or support activities, the result of p-value is less than 0.05. Means there is a significant difference of time use pattern in both activities between men and women. We can see the results of hypothesis for this variable group are failed to reject. After I tested the gender differences using independent sample t test, now I'll be talking about discussions. The result from this study shows that the labor value of women in household production is higher than men. The most striking observation is that women dedicated 4.4 hours more time compared to men for housework responsibilities. The result was aligned with the study conducted by Gaudier that stated that women still devote much of their time to housework in comparison to men. In addition, Men spend more time on self-management activities, which is including self-care activities, educational activities, leisure and recreational activities. Men also spend 4.4 hours more time on self-management activities as compared to women. This result can also be supported by a similar research done by Ng in 2018, suggested that time allocated for paid job among older men seem to have been reallocated to different type of activities such as leisure and self-care activities. However, as discussed before in the findings, there is no difference of time use pattern in labor force activities and care or support activities between men and women. A research done by Galliana in 2016 has also found that despite there was not much difference in the amount of time spent in the labor force activities by older men and women, there was a vast difference in terms of activities that they do as they age. Now I have come to the conclusion of this study. In analyzing this data, the study used gender as the main lenses to better understand the data. The study have shown that patterns in time use vary significantly by gender, especially for unpaid work activities. Generally and unsurprisingly, it is found that there is an unequal distribution of time for unpaid care work with women generally bearing a bigger proportion for household management activities. It accentuates the double invisibility of women's care work. That is, it takes place at home, excluded from market-based measurements and carried out as simultaneous activities. Often time also, it is unaccounted for in the national activities. Thus, the society should be valuing paid and unpaid work equally with unpaid care work distributed across men, women, families, the state and the market. In conclusion, older people may be thought to be inactive when they may actually be producing food for household consumption or caring for their grandchildren. These activities may not be considered economic but are essential to the survival of the family. Now my presentation has come to the last part which is the recommendations. Sex disaggregated statistics provide information on how older women and men live, what they do and what they need. 
these data are necessary so that policy makers can make informed decisions about the effect of development on older person and also about the impact that a growing older population can have on development. Several general guidelines for data collection and presentation would improve the ability to do research on older population and one of the guidelines is that published data should be disaggregated by age and sex whenever gender is a relevant variable. Productive aging in physical activity may influence older adults in maintaining their health-related quality of life. So, this study shows that policies aimed at promoting productive aging must consider gender differences in social problems and any interventions. Therefore, social policies need to take into consideration these divisions and their implications for productive aging. With that, thank you.